countryman, my real name is, that is not my real name, my real name is Joseph Kabuchi. And then I added Njeri, <laughs> I'll tell you the reason why. And then AKA Countryman, which is a stage name uh, when I sing. And also, I'm also known as uh, Pastor Dingo. Pastor Dingo is a, a, a thief. It means, Dingo means a thief. Uh, I'm a good thief. Stealing people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Yes. I was born in Nairobi, Kawangware, single mother. I didn't go, got to know my father. Yes, so that is how, and my mother died when I was 11 years of age. And uh, my extended family rejected me. They told me that I don't belong to them. It is my mom who used to belong to their family. So they abandoned me and I was left in Kawangware slums at that time. And I was in one of the rooms that my mother used to live. The life like then at that time, you know, you, I was the only son and now I don't have any guardian, anyone to help me. At that time I was in class six. So I start admiring and desiring to be like, um, like adults, the way they use things, they do things. Eh? Of course, I, I wanted to look like them. So I desired when they smoke uh, and the, the, the smoke, the way it comes from the mouth. And so for me, it looks like this is, a, this is a good thing to start. It's so cool. So I decided to do that, but I didn't have money to buy cigarettes. I used, I, I started experimenting, in, experimenting using tea leaves. I would roll tea leaves and then I would smoke. And then I would cough. At the same time, it was so, you know, irritating. And so I thought, I thought this is not the right thing to, uh, maybe I'm using the wrong thing. So I, I decided to do it the way they are doing it. So, and then now picking up the filters, that's how I got into smoking. That was in class six. In class seven, I had now graduated to marijuana. Since even my neighbor was a pickpocket and they would come and after stealing, I would, I would like smell something different from what I used to smoke. So I would wait and pick the, the small uh, bangi that has been dropped and then I would do it. I would feel so good. Like, this seems even more better than the one that I'm using. So at class seven, I wanted to know this thing and I bought it, I smoke. Already now I was hooked to marijuana. Class eight, I graduated <laughs> to alcohol. Now the illicit liquor was available. So that's how I got now to be able to be doing drugs. Yeah, three things already. Class six, seven, eight, I'm able now to, I was an addict since I didn't do well in my class eight. At this time, at this time I was being sponsored by uh, a, co a project called Compassion International, a uh, church project, and they used to pay my fees, they used to uh, pay my rent, they also used to, to buy me food. Uh, but unfortunately, they used to buy food that all, we only last for two weeks. And they would tell me, you need to eat this food for a month. So two weeks I'm in school and two weeks I'm not in school. At that time, I used to work, work as a, a casual, like a laborer. I used to cut, I used to cut some uh, firewoods for a, a woman who was cooking uh, uji around that place. So they would pay me five shillings, and this is where I would get some shillings to buy a cigarette. Yes. So class eight, I didn't do well my KCP. Uh, I failed, but I did. I had this desire uh, to go on uh, with school. I went to the, the Mradi, the project, and I told them I needed to go on with school. But they told me we cannot, we are not able to pay a full amount. Can you go and find your grandmother whereby they can help us pay your, your school fees? So they, they told me the way and I, uh, they gave me the transport. I went to look for my grandmother in Akuru whereby I found her, but she told me the same, same statement. You don't belong to us. It is your mom who used to belong to us. But I pleaded with them and asked them if they can help me go to school. Yes, they did. 
it was another way of reject, rejecting me and dumping me in a school because they took me to a school called Lake Nakuru Secondary School, whereby they dumped me there. They did a shopping of 21 shillings, that is to the paste that costed seven shillings, and um, shoe polish that costed for is it to yeah that uh, around that uh, it costed 21 shillings everything. So my first time in school, my shopping costed 21 shillings. So it was very hard for me to cope with the school since I have, I'm seeing other students come in with so many good things, you know, all those stuff, the shopping. So I decided to steal. I became a thief. Later, the administration caught up on me. And since, since they wanted to chase me away, so I had to go out of the school for some time and then came back. At that time, I used to sleep uh, nearby uh, Amjengo house for uh, there was a caretaker who used to be there so he gave me a place to sleep but he told me now I need to give you some mabangi so that you can sell to the students and I thought that was would be a good idea yes so I became a peddler in school so I sold some bangis and the same administration uh, caught up on me and I was about to be taken to prison uh, to police it was reported to police and I thought that I would go to police but I so I needed to stop that and uh, of course the school fees my grandmother did not even pay a single cent but the church was really paying the half of the amount so I had like balance all through so that was in form one form two I didn't even go to school I didn't even go to class I was just roitering in one of the slums in Nakuru and I was gambling, doing out drugs in a very conducive environment because I don't care now. Since I, I, I thought no one who cared, um, I remember my mother I, was so good to me and you know, that, that I'm, I'm still, I'm now finding it hard for me even to believe in my own family. I felt emptiness of losing my mom. So in Akuru, I began now becoming hard and now no one would stop me what I would want to do because I had no guidance, no no one. The school have rejected me, my grandmother. This is the second time that I don't belong to them. So what else? So I should like belong to the gangs. When I was just around the, the like in Akuru, walking around, you know, I'm now with a jacket. <laughs> I'm now with a jacket. Uh, plus the uniform inside. I was going around Nakuru and I met with my uncle, a uh, brother to my mom, whereby we attacked him and we removed one of his eye and tooth. I was charged in Nakuru law courts with grievous harm because I was arrested. Yes, so a well wisher who knew about my story as an orphan came and bailed me out. And now they told me that I would be living with them still in Nakuru and they would find me a new school. So I went to Afra High School in Form 2, but my habit of smoking and doing marijuana, uh, I continued with that. It was, it, it was all on all the time, yeah? On and off, on and off, but I was not doing cigarettes since, I was not doing alcohol since alcohol you will be seen staggering. So Form 3, that case of my my uncle, an assault case where I assaulted my uncle, um, it was withdrawn after one year. And then after withdrawal, I, I felt that I've been released. But I told, at that time my grandmother came and they wanted me back, but I told them, no, you are not my grandmother and no one who helped me, no one who belongs to me, who comes from this family. Yes, and I said I would rather be alone. After I completed the school, at this time I had created a lot of chaos in you know in school uh, but it's only by the grace that they didn't suspend me they expelled me they have been suspending me they didn't suspend they did expel me so I was safe at that time after completing form four I came now to Nairobi ah now I'm the cool guy the, this guy I met up with some other cool guys and we became thugs I used to mug people in Kawangware like never before I've mugged so many people and that and, and we'll get the money after the we get the money we'll be like drinking the whole day 
because you have mugged people at night. Now during the day is the time now we've been doing our stuff. That's when now I got introduced to prescription, prescription pills. The pills whereby you uh, like attain uh, diazopam, now, but they make you high more than alcohol. You are still sober, but you feel you are so, you know, life is like, it's, it's, it's so good. <laughs> so at that time, at that time I didn't have a place to sleep. I was um, hanging around with other gangs. And uh, one day, up to one day where they chased me away and they told me now we cannot tolerate you. You know, you're becoming like more than us. Like I'm becoming uh, more, you know, muscles muscleless, inhuman, I'm like even having a machete whereby I would cut, smash people, you know, ears without caring. And they would tell, do you know what you did yesterday? I don't know what. We are searching for money. We are looking for money. We don't care. If they don't give us, we, we do what they are supposed to do. So at this time I was sleeping outside. And I didn't have a place to go since they have been, they have told me to uh, not to be among them. So I started living alone. I started sleeping in the streets, like in some areas, Zinaito, we call them mature. That's the place where I used to sleep. I became so dirty, so stinking, you know, and, and everyone did not accept me. Everyone rejected me and all people thought that uh, this is a reject. Uh, where I was sleeping, some of the some of the gangs wanted to kill me and they came with a, a big, a huge stone and they hit me while I was, I was sleeping. They banged me with the stone and I did not die <laughs> the way they thought. So after getting healed, after some time I said I would revenge. Now that is the time, now I would deal with people and also people will deal with me. I used to carry a machete and this machete I would cut uh, people Yes, I used to think when I go to prison and come back, I would still find them without one of the ears. So I would be the guy. I would be the guy who have won. So that's what I thought. So some of the families took me to prison because of grievous harm. And after I went there, I went there for 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 eight months. Every month, my first time, second time, I went there for eight months. The third time, it was three years in demand because I never accepted that I have done the the. The, the, I, I was against the accusation. Tell them. Tell them to make their hearts straight. The information Price came when, um, when now out of prison, out of prison, I didn't have hope. I was, I was hopeless in the street, and I felt like I needed to finish myself, to finish this life, like permanently. So I wanted to commit suicide. Uh, but I thought of myself that one day I'll become something. So I was also afraid of going to hell. I thought even the police would kill me, my sin would be transferred to them. That's what I thought. So my transformation came where, uh, while some of the organizations that work with the streets were telling us that it is able to change, change is possible, that we didn't know how. So I was taken to a rehabilitation program called Teen Challenge Kenya, whereby I went there for a year. That, is, that was 20, 2010. Um, September 24th. That was my first time to be uh, f for over 20 years to be sober. That was my first time now to sleep without any drug. And they told me there there was God in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, and I was like, ah, when then you call? Since I used to be a Mongeke, I used to be a Rastafarian, so all those things. But I knew Jesus, but not the way they, they used to teach us. So I completed that program. Uh, after one year, that is 2010 to 2011, I graduated and it was cool, but I didn't have a place to go. Some of the well-wishers came, they bought some things, furnitures in my house. That was my first time to be in a one-bedroom house. After one month, I sold everything. Since I was being called, I, I applied for Bible uh, school. So I was going there for interview and then I passed the interview. So when I went, I became now a boarder in Bible school. I, I graduated, after three years, I graduated in Bible and theology. Yes, and now I felt that I needed also to tell the other guys that I left in the street that change is possible. So I went to the street, reaching out to some of the hardest drug addicts, heroin addicts, cocaine addicts, 
criminal and gangs. And I found that also girls also need to be reached out. And this time they were prostitutes. So I, I went even to the brothels and tried reaching them. I've done this for like three years and a half now. And uh, when I went there, some other guys came and helped me to pay. Uh, they sponsor the guys that I take out of the street. Yes. So to a rehab that I used to be. So that is how my life has been. So it is not an easy thing. It has always been a threat, you know, those threats. But I've really been courageous to, I've gathered my courage always to be there because if I am not there, who then will be there? These people will be dead because most of them have died even when I'm seeing them. Have, have been killed by the mob, have been shot by the police. So before they, been, they, they get killed, I'm, I'm there for them. I'm hoping that one day I'll have my uh, organization of which I'm, I'm, I'm in that process, yes, of registering um, an NGO, whereby I can be able to help so many people according to the help they need. For example, now I went to the street and I found that there was a mother who was mentally sick and she left us uh, a small baby, one year old. So where do I take that girl, that baby? And the other girls are telling me, you need to pick this girl, you need to pick this baby. And even they don't know the name. They told me to name that baby. And I called that baby Hope. He's still in the street. You also find young mothers with, 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 with babies. You don't know where to take them. So I would, I would desire that each time I find a problem that maybe I don't, because I reach out to gangs, to those um, hardcore, hardcore drug users. When I find such cases, where do I take them? I'm praying that one day I have my facility, a big one, whereby we can have vocational training, we can have rehabs, kids, all areas that people in the street suffer. We can be able to become a solution to the problems that is in the streets. The area of need is drugs and young mothers in the street. Yes, they hard, hard, hard drugs, they are turning uh, our youths into criminals, thieves. Since you have started using drugs, you need to feed that habit. So where do you end? And of course, drug addicts don't like to work. So what happens is that they will, they, will, they will start stealing, and they start stealing at home, they are chased away, and then they come to the community, the community becomes a national problem. That's why we see so many young kids with guns. Yes, even those ones we are reaching to, to them, you know, they tell us that this is, we don't have any other life. This is the life that we have known and we are poor. We want to live a, a good life for three years and then we die. We don't care. So it's for me to tell them there is a good way to live this life. You don't have to die for after three years, a millionaire. Yeah, I, I think from where I've come from, I, I, I don't give up on people because so many people have invested in my life I also need to invest and of course that passion that passion keeps me going and of, of course I've known my purpose I have known why, why I exist I don't just exist for my own and the change that I've gotten right now is not on my own it's, it's for other people it's for other people to see life develop life life healed and, and, and life lives restored I, I used to sing. That is one of the things that made me not commit suicide. I thought one day I would sing. That, I used to sing in school. I used to do music, you know. I used to be a good rapper. I used to sing with Red Sun, a, a renowned Kenya artist. I used to sing with Chameleon. I used to sing with Baby Cool. That time it was in Florida 2000. And I used to become number one in those competitions. But now, see, I want to kill myself. That, that, that vision actually stopped me from killing myself. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm doing music. And after graduating from Bible school, my vision in that magazine was that one day I'll become, I'll, I'll teach people about the gospel of Jesus in the streets with testimonies and music. That's what I thought, but it came to pass. Even. I'm doing, I'm even shocked that I'm doing the things that I wrote long time ago, yeah. <laughs>
I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, and of course, I would, I would, the, the Bible is my, 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 my tool for every word I write. Yes, and of course, I would want to sing uh, with the aim that I'm reaching other people. Of course, I would take the music that they desire to. Yeah, the gender does not matter, as long as the message is what they really matters. Yeah, for me. There is no hopeless situation, only people make situation look hopeless. And there is no one who is beyond the cure. Yes, that is even one of the things that makes me, like, you know, remain in the street. I know as long as people decide to change, that is the condition for, for transformation. If you want to change, it is possible. And I would say, like, uh, our, our runner keep talking that no human is limited. Yes. So change is possible as long as you want it. If you don't want it, you can remain where you are. Choices make you or break you. Right choices, they are rewarding. Bad ones, they are also rewarding, but the consequences is very painful. Yes. Choices like like the choices that I, whatever I did, I actually paid everything. So when I follow the right, you know, like I have learned success is predictable and failure is predictable. Yes. As long as you follow the, lo the laws of success, you are going to succeed. When you follow, when you don't follow the laws of, uh, you're supposed to follow, then failure is, will be the result. A lot of regrets. 20 years wasted, that is wasted potential. I would have done a lot, I would have been something different. But I thank God that some of the things have been restored, like music, talking to youths, you know, going to churches and talking to young, you know, the, the guys there, also going to the street and trying to speak to the, guy, to the people in the street, and also going to prison and trying to talk to the inmates. Not only that, I usually go to school. Like, I'll be also be going to University of Nairobi and I'll be part of the panelists doing the drugs and substance abuse, yeah, talk. I want to change the world. My, my desire is to keep rolling, keep going, keep hitting up the point I will see that one day it's me, the, 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 the mouth, you know. <laughs> Everyone is talking about this guy like Kipchoge, Elliot, yeah. And, and I think that's why I'm, I'm headed. My, my desire is to change, to change the streets, to, you know, to have epidemic of changed lives everywhere, an impact to influence and to impact the society with change. Raise your voice high up to the sky. Uh, we have managed to get up, uh, 38 uh, women and men out of the street and now they are doing well, others are in school, others are doing business, others have become intern where I used to work and I'm also using them to go back to the street to reach others because of their testimonies. Uh, these people still need some help when they complete the program. That's now the challenge because sometimes uh, others have didn't, didn't go to school, others have nothing like they can, they can't work, they have no skills. So that's where we begin. If we can have well-wishers, people who would want to come and join, already now I'm, I'm, I'm starting an NGO uh, which can really help us like get funds whereby we can be able to help them after the, the rehabilitation program. I'm also hoping that in long term I'll be able to have my own rehabilitation program and a place when they come out of the program they will be taught it is called halfway house they'll be taught how to live the ones that come out of the prison will be waiting for them to also help them on how to live productive lives the one in the street who have not gone to school we can teach them skills their kids also we can have a place for them so that is my vision to be able to be a well equipped you know in in, in any I can solve so many other issues that pertain the streets.